Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Doing another movie review this week. Yeah, I finally saw the movie. Didn't think I would do it, but I did it. I saw the movie Skyscraper. With Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. You know, trying to save his family from terrorists at the world's tallest building in Hong Kong. Yep, and we have seen this kind of movie before with several other films that rips off Die Hard and even the Towering Inferno for that matter. And this is exactly one of them. The funny thing is, I'd rather watch another film with the same title with Anna Nicole Smith, God rest her soul, that basically borrows the same plot as Die Hard. I guess the one thing's in common though was that Anna Smith did actually have a gorgeous body. But her acting wasn't a hundred percent good. Yeah. But you know my best friend uh, and teacher Raymond Martino directed that film, also wrote it. And he definitely had his experience having to film the movie in Los Angeles on another skyscraper that Smith had to climb up on. Yeah, the only thing that was misleading though was the the movie poster that's on the, the DVD and VHS tape where they show the skyscraper of the first Interstate Bank Tower. But the whole film was centered around another skyscraper instead. Yeah, I can see why. Well, anyway, let, let's get back to this one. Um, this time it's written and directed by Watson Marshall Ferber. For those who don't know, he's been known for directing comedies and writing them too, such as Dodgeball and Central Intelligence as well as We're the Millers. And I know Central Intelligence uh, also has uh, Dwayne Johnson aka The Rock which actually had some action scenes in that film too. But this time he's actually writing and directing a non-comedy film. And let me tell you something, he's not very good at it. He's not very good at writing an action movie. And I can see why. And as much as I love Central Intelligence, this was not one of them I had to deal with for, for The Rock. Because a lot lately, The Rock has been, you know, choosing bad scripts after another and just continues to go on on a streak of bad movies. I mean, I saw Jumanji 2 Welcome to the Jungle and I hated that fucking movie to death. I didn't even laugh once in that film. It's a total insult to the original Jumanji that was based on the book. And then we get films like uh, Rampage and Baywatch and all of that. I still haven't seen Rampage yet, so I don't know which is worse. <laughs> but now that I'm reviewing this one, I'm, maybe this might be it. Uh, but you know, I knew this movie was going to be um, a stinker because... The whole entire movie, even though they had, they actually did shot this in Canada, and I think they shot some of it in Hong Kong as well. The whole film looks like it was done on a green screen, and it really shows because I saw like uh, some photos of, of the rock actually jumping all the way straight to where the, the skyscraper is supposed to be. I mean, I think they must have used that shot from the movie poster, and that sums it up. So the whole film is basically him just jumping on a green screen, all on on the entire film set. Because the rest of the skyscraper, that's the tallest building in China, is also the most ugliest looking building I've ever saw, called the Pearl. It's all done with CGI technology, that's all it is. Nothing new, nothing original. What can we do? 
but it stars Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, along with Neff Campbell. Wow, I haven't seen Neff Campbell in seven years since uh, Scream 4, which was a disappointment of the Scream franchise. But hey, it's great to see her again after all these years. Chin Han, Wolin Muller, Nora Taylor, Brian Mann, Pablo Schreiber, Hannah Kriveland, Meadow Larry, McKenna Roberts, Noah Quadro, Kevin Reckin, Adrian Holmes, and Taz Ma. Written and directed by Watson Marshall Ferber. The movie begins when we meet a Chinese financier and interpreter named Zio Longji, who just financed the construction of the world's tallest skyscraper in Hong Kong, which is 3,500 feet and 225 stories tall, known simply as the Pearl, which houses many apartment complexes, offices, shops, parks, and many others in the tallest building ever. But halfway through the construction process, that's where we lead a team of international terrorists that's under the control of Chorus Bafa, who brought in some rival gangsters and others from a major crime syndicates to extort money, you know, millions of dollars worth, that has the tracking information which Zio suddenly believes that there is actually a memory card that could track all the money laundering tracking information on Boffa, which provide him insurance against any attempt. But unfortunately, Boffa suddenly learns the existence of the memory card to actually retrieve it in order to destroy it, where it has all the incriminating information it contains. But meanwhile, Marine War veteran and retired FBI hostage rescue team leader Will Sawyer who's played by Dwayne Johnson aka The Rock you know who's, who just got into a hostage situation between a criminal who held hostage to a little kid and actually survived uh, a blast which actually sent him to the hospital by a nurse named Sarah who turned out to be his wife is played by Neff Campbell. He now has a pathetic leg since he just lost one. And he's now access uh, security for skyscrapers, only to be tasked to inspect the Pearl. So he only confirms to Zio, along with the security officers, uh, which happens to be Sawyer's friend and ex FBI agent uh, Ben Gillespie. Uh, along with a uh, Johnny Okeke, and also joins him with insurance agent uh, Mr. Pierce. So apparently, the entire building of the fire and security systems are secured, but they need to inspect the offsite security that controls the system. So Zio suddenly gives uh, Will the tablet that can give full administration to all the access of the Pearl's computer systems that can only work by unlocking a facial recognition. While heading to the off-site security system, that's where we have a thief that's working for Boffa by stealing the tablets. But then Ben suddenly reveals that he's actually working for Boffa, so yes, he's considered to be the traitor. So that leads to a bigger fight inside his apartment complex. You know, in a very major fight and Will actually kills him too yeah I mean after he just you know knocks him into the TV and all of that and shot him so the whole plan was that Bofa was suddenly taking over the situation inside the skyscraper and since the tablet has been stolen it's being controlled by by Bofa's subordinate uh, Zia so she steals the tablet before infiltrating the security center and killing the, everyone that she's working with. Yeah, because that's what she is. But then, you know, she even has a hacker of the security center to hack inside the Pearl security systems to, to 
to lock out all the administrative access and control the entire skyscraper which Balfa and the rest of his team just dumped in lots of chemicals inside so they can you know they can set the entire building on fire but Sarah along with her two kids uh, Georgia and Henry are actually inside trapped in the skyscraper while the whole building is on fire after that the terrorists had arrived they were chasing Will the cops joined in as well Will suddenly steals their motorcycle and goes all the way straight into the skyscraper where Sarah and her kids are at already being trapped all the way down into the park of the skyscraper so it's being broadcast on a big screen filled with the entire crowd along with the cops and they're just about to go after Will because of what happened so then Will decided to climb all the way up on top of the crane so he can jump all the way straight into the broken glass window of the skyscraper and actually held on to the ledge yeah well he actually had to trap all the cops who were chasing him all the way up into the elevator yeah he, he just trapped him by using the axe so, <laughs> so once he finally uh, got there he rescued Sarah along with Georgia and Henry only to be uh, split apart by one terrorist before he fell all the way straight into the ground where the whole entire park was on fire and the bridge was already broken down to size so you know, Georgia had to be on the other side of the level so that way you know Will can go over there and to save her so Sarah suddenly uh, saves Henry by actually trying to bring in the board yeah, Will had to lift up um, the ledge of the bridge so that way she can climb up all the way to to grab him and just go back to where it is before the, the bridge starts to collapse and then Will just suddenly jumps in onto the ledge but then Will decided to take uh, Sarah and Henry into the elevator so he just cuts in the rope and she just goes all the way down and just so she could be saved and being taken by the police officers just to find out what's going on and she explains to him you know just before um, uh, George is being held hostage uh, by Balfa and Will is just about to go after him and that's what leads to the scene where you know he had to uh, shut down he has to lock down the the systems here by actually jumping out of the window and using the tomb with <laughs> duct tape you know, just so he can cover his scars but he also had to use more duct tape to hold on for the ropes so he doesn't fall and he has to hang on to the, the tomb that can connect it straight to the window and, and just swings around to to the other side so it can go into the lockdown system and it's filled with a lot of um, air conditioning uh, movements and he has to go back go inside just before the uh, the door was about to be shielded shut and he actually takes it down then he suddenly takes the uh, the wooden leg the wooden prosthetic leg just to held on to it so he can go straight into the door <laughs> and before he spotted Zyle where he has a gun and that's when they tell this story so it was up to Sawyer to save um, save Georgia from Boffa and the rest of the team which ends in a you're gonna love this a mirror scene so Will just went up to go after Boffa as he pushes him off the ledge while he had the grenade and, and explodes and as he rescues uh, Georgia so now they're both safe while well, Sarah just suddenly found the stolen tablet that was dropped by Zia 
I mean, that was after she beat the shit out of her, which she was going after. So apparently, she was the one who can override the shutdown of the high-tech fire extinguishing capability built that's inside the skyscraper. So she gets to reboot the system, and it actually goes back to the way it was. So now, it actually gets to uh, clear out the entire building all the fires so now the whole entire building needs to be rebuilt but they all escaped so everyone's safe uh, yeah well I saw the whole movie and boy did I saw the whole film and I wasn't impressed not at all I thought the whole film was overbearing overstuffed with not one memorable scene that I can think of other than the fact that they just borrow elements from other movies besides Die Hard and The Towering Inferno come to mind and nothing special I mean Dwayne Johnson may have gave it a decent performance but that's nothing new I mean he's basically just playing the same character that he always plays you know, The Rock just going around, jumping up all the way to the ledge of the skyscraper. You know, doing all these action scenes that even Bruce Willis couldn't do, which I think that's bullshit. Or, or, <laughs> or any other, because he is The Rock, and that's why we love him. Okay. Um, it's great to see Neff Campbell again. And she did a fine job, and so was the two kids, uh, Georgia and Henry. And Chin Han is fine. But the rest of the characters are just are just lame copycats from other action films, as I already mentioned, you know, Die Hard. I mean, Boras is definitely a poor imitation of Hans Gruber, and he's not a very good one at that. See, it just proves that Ferber doesn't know how to write a character as smart and intelligent as as Hans was. That's the beauty of that character because he's so memorable that you just never forget. And, and the best they could do for this movie was <laughs> come up with some lame one-liners such as got it a duct tape or welcome to heaven. Yeah, during that scene where where Zhao is actually showing the will how how to operate the entire skyscraper, you know, on the top level. Yeah, the way he controls it with the tablet, where he actually gets to show the walls of mirrors and all this other stuff from outside, and then he turns the entire uh, top level into what do you know? The sky. And it's like, wow, so you're already inside a glass shield of the entire skyscraper. <laughs> yeah, welcome to heaven indeed. Uh, yeah, the scene where, where the rock had to grab a tomb and you know, rope his way up using duct tape and you know, just jump out of the window trying to go to the other side, just trying to get to the um, the lockout system that's that's one thing he has to do yeah something that that's pretty much like the scene where Bruce Willis had to jump all the way up to the top of the the skyscraper of the Nakatomi Plaza and the and the, the climax of the film where yeah again as I mentioned the walls and mirrors oh nothing special uh, uh, even the the female character, who's also the villain named Zaya, is just going around just shooting people because they're not doing the jobs correctly or anything. Just steals the tablet, trying to control everything that he does. Fucks everything up. What can we do? Uh, it's just so overbearing to watch. 
<laughs> but hey, that's what you get when you have to see the rock just going on to a giant green screen effect throughout the entire set, even though the movie had been shot in Canada and Hong Kong. And that's exactly what, what you want for an action movie. See, even with all the physical stunts that he had to pull up for, this is why, you know, movies like Mission Impossible Fallout really works. I know I haven't seen the movie yet, but I really want to see it. Because it's certainly a better film than this. And I'm glad that film's doing so well at the box office. Because, see, here's some proof here that a movie like Mission Impossible does work because they definitely know how to handle their action scenes very well. In fact, Ghost Protocol had the most memorable scene with the skyscraper, and that's done very well. See, you actually have Tom Cruise actually going around, swinging around, you know, trying to go straight into the, the skyscraper, you know, using the uh, the gloves to to con to hold on and try to go into um, what's connected inside. So, see, that's how you do a film just right. And that this was a dangerous stunt compared to this. This looks like it's not as dangerous as you may think, but it's supposed to be dangerous. So you can even tell that they didn't shot the they didn't shot the scene on a green screen. Although maybe they did a little bit for for one for the villain that got shoot out. But Cruz actually had to do a lot of physical stunts. And he actually got hurt too. In fact, he even did one stunt uh, for the upcoming movie where he actually injured his leg. I mean, he actually has gotten injured while doing them. So he knows what he's doing. And it also proves that Cruz actually loves movies. And he loves working on them. He loves to have fun with it. It seems like The Rock isn't having any much fun. And I think that's sad. And by the way, the film has actually failed domestically in North America, so I don't think it's not making as much. It was not a hit. But it did actually make its profit worldwide, including China, so it actually did very well over there, and it does here. But what can we do? <laughs> so they, they should learn the lesson right here. Well, anyway, the movie flopped forgettable. <laughs> I just wish The Rock would just pick better scripts nowadays. And this is exactly what he's doing. He's just not doing very well. He's not handling quality control. Anyway, that's Skyscraper. <sighs> and I give the film one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.